Joining us now, as he does on Fridays, uh, is Jonathan Kim. He's with Rethink Reviews, of course. In fact, he is Rethink Reviews. <laughs> uh, we're going to do Stonewall Uprising today. Let's watch the uh, review first and then come back and give you some amazing facts about uh, discrimination against gays in this country uh, after the review. Let's watch first. The open gay people that hung out on the streets were basically the have-nothing-to-lose types which I was. A lot of them had been thrown out of their families. And that crowd between Howard Johnson's and Mama's Chicken Rib was like the basic crowd of the gay community at that time in the village. You got to remember, the Stonewall Bar was just down the street from there. It was right in the center of where we all were. That was our only block. That was our world, that block. I mean, I came out in Central Park and other places. That wasn't ours. It was borrowed. This was ours. Here's where the stone was. Here's our Mecca. Sometimes, when you watch TV, it feels like America has made great strides when it comes to acceptance of gay people. You see more openly gay and gay-friendly celebrities, more gay characters on scripted and reality shows, and you think, hey, we're doing pretty good. We're getting there. Then you hear about Asher Brown, Billy Lucas, Justin Auberg, Tyler Clementi, and Seth Walsh, five gay teenagers who committed suicide in a three-week span because of anti-gay harassment. And you're reminded that in most parts of America, it still really, really sucks being gay, especially if you're young. So for all the gay people out there who feel desperate and alone and that their pain will never end, I'd like to recommend Stonewall Uprising, a documentary about the riots in Greenwich Village in 1969, where gay people fought back against the police to defend the one place in America where they could truly be themselves, and by doing so, started the gay rights revolution. As told through powerful interviews with those involved in the riots, Stonewall Uprising starts by showing how utterly horrific things were for gays before 1969, when committing homosexual acts was against the law in 49 states. Homosexuality was considered a mental illness, like being a psychopath or a pedophile, and was sometimes treated with shock therapy, lobotomies, and even castration. If you were outed, your life was basically over. Your name and address might get printed in the newspaper, you'd lose your job, your housing, or be beaten by anti-gay vigilantes. The idea of being out of the closet was not even imaginable. As one interviewee puts it, there was no out, there was just in. That is, except for in Greenwich Village in New York City, the one place in America where gay people could be themselves and find a community that understood them. In the middle of the village was Christopher Street, where, as one interviewee puts it, the quote, nothing to lose types like homeless gay street kids, drag queens, hustlers, and transgender people hung out. And in the middle of Christopher Street was the Stonewall Inn, a cruddy bar run by the Mafia, as most gay bars were at the time, where the most marginalized of the gay community could take refuge, have a watered down, overpriced drink, and, most importantly, dance with whomever they wanted. Since the Mafia paid off the cops, the Stonewall was only raided during off hours. But on June 28, 1969, the cops raided the Stonewall on a busy Saturday night. And this time, the patrons resisted arrest as a growing, increasingly angry crowd began to assemble outside. The cops barricaded themselves inside the Stonewall with some of the people they were arresting. So the crowd began hurling rocks, bricks, and anything else they could find through the windows, and eventually set the place on fire. The cops escaped when reinforcements arrived, and an all-out battle broke out, with the gay crowd battling the cops and chasing them through the village. Gays and their supporters fought the cops for the next three nights, and when it was all over, gay people in the village recognized that something had changed, that they were out and more unified than they had ever been. So after the last night of fighting, a march was organized, the world's first gay pride parade. From that moment, dozens of gay rights organizations arose, and there was no turning back. If you're gay, feeling alone, attacked, desperate, and hopeless, Stonewall Uprising is a movie you have to see. Because before the Stonewall riots, this was what all gay people felt because it was what society forced on them, and there were no other options. But on June 28, 1969, gay people created a new reality where they could fight back, fight for themselves, fight for their rights and their dignity, and even fight the cops if that's what it took. Those people were brave, braver than they knew they could be. And to all you gay people going through hell out there, that's what you've got to do. That's easy for me to say, having never experienced anything close to what you're going through. But one thing I do know is that the gay rights movement does not need more victims, and it doesn't need more martyrs. So please, don't let these assholes win, whether they're bullies or Republicans or religious leaders who want to increase their power using your pain and your blood. Just fight. Fight like the Stonewall rioters did. Fight like your life depends on it, because it does. 
And when you do, I promise you that there are millions of people like me out there who will have your back and will be rooting for you. I'm Jonathan Kim, and this is a Rethink Review. All right, that's powerful. Uh, as usual, uh, well, that's a particularly powerful story, John. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the history of laws against homosexuality, right? So first of all, I assume this goes back a long, long time, uh, obviously. But let's talk about Anglo-American uh, right. jurisprudence. So, so in the colonies, most of the laws came from, uh, from the British. And so the, the first uh, anti-sodomy law was found in a 13th century publication um, in, uh, that was in England that was against sodomy. And in, in 1533, there was a, a secular law, not based in religion, against the abominable vice of buggery, which I learned that the term buggery uh, came from Bulgaria, where they thought a lot of sinful people came from. Oh, really? Yeah. I did not know that. <laughs> yeah. That is a fact I enjoy and will get us in a lot more trouble with our Bulgarian friends. Okay, buggery. Yeah, and so, and so states were, different states were kind of, were kind of adopting it. Uh, but it wasn't, they weren't always punished in the colonies. In Massachusetts, um, people accused of buggery were sent to England for trial. Mm -hmm. and, um, but a lot of times they were just kind of, the laws were kind of ignored. Uh, Virginia had the first written prohibition against sodomy in 1610. This was repealed after, eight, uh, after only eight years. Um, That's and, interesting. Yeah. And so then, in 1618, Virginia thinks, ah, maybe buggery not so bad. I think they're just like, who cares? But um, that's but, fascinating, and that's obviously before the country's even formed. Right, and then yeah. but then Plymouth, which was more uh, obviously more puritanical, they had they had laws against it that were based on Leviticus. But uh, I thought this was interesting. Uh, Pennsylvania, because they were more Quaker influenced, you know, and they're against sort of you know more sort of harsh uh, harsh penalties. And uh, so they thought that uh, sodomy, um, that was a capital offense in other places, was considered deserving of no more than six months in jail. Oh, well, are they not merciful? You see, uh, that's why you got to like the Quakers. So, um, all right, now, everybody knows that historically we've had these issues, right, and through, for a very long time. Although it wavers back and forth, actually, the Catholic Church changed its mind on sodomy on several occasions, depending on which pope was in power, okay? So that's also interesting. But now, I think what might surprise some, because now we're beginning to get to a point where some people have grown up in the context that, it, where they don't realize that being gay used to be illegal, right? right? First of all, let me catch you up. What's the year in America where we finally may have had a decision that said, you know what, being gay or having gay sex is not illegal? 2003, Lawrence versus Texas case. 2003. Until then, if you were having gay sex, it was illegal in many places, not in every state, but you know, obviously in Texas it was. And in that case, they broke into some guy's house uh, under some investigation. He's having sex in his bedroom, and they arrested him. Mm. Okay? And then eventually, uh, the Supreme Court overturned that. Now, by the way, it was not a unanimous decision. Uh, people like Justice Scalia were like, huh, he said in his dissent, if we uh, say that you can't outlaw having gay sex, what's next? We can't outlaw people masturbating? <laughs> yeah! Yeah, that's what's next. <laughs> okay, among many other things that he listed, they're like, come on, we got to be able to outlaw these kind of sex acts. Come on, crazy, right? Well, in, in, in 1923, there was a case where two New Jersey men were, um, were having sex in their own home, and they were arrested, and they basically said that what they were doing did not, quote, debauch the morals and manners of the people. And the New Jersey Supreme Court basically disagreed, but what's crazy about that law is that a man and a woman having sex aren't allowed to have sex out in public because that would to be debauching the morals and manners of people, but that's obviously not illegal. Mm -hmm. So it, it's really, it really just comes down to the individual opinion of judges. Like in 1944, there was another case with, uh, with two men for having consensual uh, oral sex in their home and said that this is in the privacy of our own home, and the Arizona Supreme Court just basically just ignored it. Right, so. and in 1986, by the way, as, as John has in his research, uh, the Supreme Court had taken this up and said, no, no, it's, this is, there's a long history of discriminating against gays, and so we're going to respect that precedent. And I, I got to say, I, I mean, I grew up mainly in the Midwest and stuff, so maybe it's a little different. I never thought it had much to do with the law so much as local kids in the high school or, you know, adolescents beating the shit out of anybody that they thought looked gay. I never right. thought it was an official thing, and then, of course, the police never cared. 
Well, there was a lot of times it was considered like lewdness or obscenity or things like that. Like the, there was a talk that at first the, the anti-gay laws were about like ab like upholding purity and things like that, and then it switched to like protecting children and obscenity and you know what kind of society do we live in, like that sort of thing. Right, and and so look. In 1969, things start to change with the Stonewall Uprising, as the movie talks about. So it's not just that the laws are changing, but attitudes begin to change, right? right. So t tell us a little bit about the Kinsey Report and the effect that that had. Yeah, that and when was that roughly? Right, uh, the Kinsey Report. There were there were two um, there were two version. I mean, two volumes of it that that came out, uh, 1948 and 1953. That basically said people are having all sorts of different kinds of sex. Like, and it doesn't mean in like people that you know. Like, there's obviously a very wide ranging report. And then years after that, uh, certain states started to change their laws. Arkansas, Georgia, Nevada, New Jersey, and New York. They lowered their max their maximum or minimum penalties for sodomy. And New York was the first to change its status from a felony to a misdemeanor. All right, good for them. Right. Do, you, do you have the date it on that? Or? Uh, well, seven years after, the, after I think, one of the reports, so probably like 1960. And, um, and then also around 1955, California eliminated sexual perverts from the list of those subject to the state's sterilization laws. So before 1955, in California, one of the most liberal states, if you were a sexual pervert, like a homosexual, uh, you could be sterilized. Okay, I mean, to give you a sense of what's on the right. books and, and which they did from time to time, and to give you a sense of, the, as Wes was talking about, the climate. I mean, if you live uh, in a look, state where you can stake and sterilize you for being gay, are you going to be surprised when, the, when kids beat up other kids that they perceive to be gay? Yeah. Well, there, there was also, there was a poll in 1970 that, fa that found that 86% of the U.S. population believed that same-sex activity should be, um, even between people in a loving relationship, was sometimes, almost always, or always wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and that goes to, of course, public opinion on this, but things are changing. So now we get to the point where the debate we're having is about gay marriage as opposed to should gay, being gay be illegal, be gay, gay sex be illegal, you know, can you discriminate against gays in the workforce? We still have some of those debates. Obviously, don't ask, don't tell is a big one. Mm -hmm. But, you know, look, as you look at it, it's a terrible and long uh, uh, history. But the, you know, the, what is it, the arc of justice bends towards, no, the arc of history bends towards justice. I've screwed that quote <laughs> up at least four times on this show. Well, you know, in terms of gay marriage, it's interesting in the in uh, Stonewall Uprising, they talk about sort of early kind of gay rights movements. But they were really focused on making on saying gay people are just like everyone else and they would have protests where they asked everyone to like dress very nicely in suits and in dresses look just like everyone else and just have signs that said like you know I does like gay people deserve rights but they said like no holding hands no shows of affection anything like that and there was at one point in the movie they have there's an interview with like a spokesperson for this early gay gay rights um, group and he's saying listen if you've heard that we want gay marriage like that's just a fringe element it's just some crazy like we don't want that i mean <laughs> what, what's interesting about in stonewall uprising is you see that just gay people's perceptions of themselves were re were very different at the time where the like like i said in the review this guy says like there was no such thing as out like you were only in like the idea that you would be an out gay person was just ludicrous it was crazy talk and like when and like i said in the review that when they had the first uh, gay pride march they were wondering if they were going to get shot at, if there was bombs, if they got bomb threats and stuff. Like, they didn't know they were going, they didn't have any plan for what there was going to happen when they got to Central Park at the end. Because they thought they might have been running for their lives at that point. Like, they just, they couldn't conceive of the idea that you could actually be out and gay, really, until the Stonewall Riots. Right, and so, final thing here is, to give you a sense of why it was inconceivable to be out at that time period. We, we have a clip here. Set up the clip for us, uh, John. Okay, this is Detective John Sorensen speaking to a school. I think this is in the early 60s. That's what it looks like. This is in Dade County, Florida. He was the head of the Morals and Juvenile Squad. All right, and listen to what he says to the kids. There may be some in this auditorium. There may be some here today that will be homosexual in the future. There are a lot of kids here. There may be some girls that will turn lesbian. We don't know, but it's serious. Don't kid yourselves about it. They can be anywhere. They can be judges, lawyers. We ought to know we've arrested all of them. So if any one of you have let yourself become involved with an adult homosexual or with another boy, and you're doing this on a regular basis, you better stop quick, because one out of three of you will turn queer. 
And if we catch you involved with a homosexual, your parents are going to know about it first. And you will be caught. Don't think you won't be caught. Because this is one thing you cannot get away with. This is one thing that if you don't get caught by us, you'll be caught by yourself. And the rest of your life will be a living hell. Jesus, man, how much did I they feel like scare that guy the kids? should be wearing an armband or something. I know, it's yeah. just so terrifying, like, just to hear that. It gives me, like, creeps. Yeah, imagine you're a gay kid in that audience. How you're going to be traumatized for the rest of your life. I mean, the guy says, we're watching, we're going to catch you, we're going to catch you. Don't you ever do anything like that. Your life will be a living hell. And then you wonder why nobody was out. <laughs> Are you crazy? Who would come out in this? Is, you know, yeah, I mean, a people, place like that. Like, people were so deeply underground back then, and that's why, I mean, they talk about, you know, like, dirty old men picking up kids or, like, people doing things in the balconies of movie theaters or, you know, in, in, in men's bathrooms. But they were being told over and over again that being gay is this horrible, dirty, disgusting thing. And so the only way that you could engage in it would be in these horrible, dirty ways and places. Like, in a part of the movie, they talk about um, this guy saying, like, we would go down to, like, the empty loading docks in, like, the meatpacking district and would be having like sex with anonymous people in like these in empty like meat con like uh, trucks truck um truck trailers that like smelled of rotting meat and stuff but that was the only place that you could go you know that was also time when you could be if you had sex in your apartment that you rented you could get thrown out of your apartment you know right. if people knew about you you could lose your job you could basically be blacklisted for the rest of your life your life would be completely ruined right so. and, and look what we just showed you wasn't from the 13th century it was from about 40 to 45 years ago in this country. So, and a lot of people that were around then are around now. And you think those guys are going to change their minds and be like, oh, yeah, gays, that's totally all right. Let them get married, et cetera. Not and, just that. I mean, even beyond that, look at, look at the response of the Reagan administration to the AIDS epidemic. It mm -hmm. was, they deserved it. I mean, that, yeah. was, that was clearly communicated by President Reagan, like in the early 80s. Not only that, Christine O'Donnell, running for Senate today, said on te television a couple of years ago, Look, these uh, people who get AIDS, they're not victims. You know, they, they had the gay sex and, you know, and so basically they had it coming, right? right. And it's just dis disturbing. Well, one only question that I had about that guy was, he said a third of you will turn queer. I thought that was a fascinating thing. He, apparently he thinks there's more gays than we think there are. <laughs> right. No, he was saying, he was saying of the people that were fooling around, a third of them would turn Right, that was my question. Was he, did he mean that? If he did, well, that's a fascinating thing, too. He thinks well, two-thirds of the people gotta, who are having gay sex no, aren't, won't really turn queer. I, they're just having fun. I think uh, I, the odds are that guy was probably gay. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I mean, I mean, I'd be shocked all, if you were. I mean, what we've seen, at least in the last 20 years, is all the biggest anti-gay people are all gay. Yeah. Right. They're just in the closet, and it's fuck. sorry, it's screwed their <laughs> brains up so much that they can't, like, you know, they hate themselves. Right, and I think that's why he said that number. Like, because, oh, two-thirds of them aren't really gay, aren't really queer. Yeah, yeah it's basically the idea that, yeah, that they would be like, like, some of you want to experiment and kind of fool around with your buddies. Like, don't do that. If you, if you get caught doing that, that'll be bad. But if you go all the way gay, then it's over, you know. Right, right. So, hey, listen, man. I mean, in some ways, it's chilling to see how uh, bad it was so recently in this country. And like I said, in some ways, it's encouraging because we have gotten better and hopefully right. we'll continue to get better. That's the kind of progress we want to make. That's why we're progressives. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that, I mean, really, you know, because I, I want to review this movie now because of all the, all the, um, the gay teen suicides and everything. And I really think this is an amazing movie for people to watch, just to realize how far we've come and also the need to fight. I mean, because, like, this was at a time when basically, like, underground gay clubs could just get raided, where the cops would just come in and just arrest everybody, and the people in the club, in these clubs would never fight. They would just, like, they would say the lights would come on, and everyone would just kind of scatter, like, stop touching, you know, just, like, scatter away from each other, and would just get taken off to jail. But the Stonewall riots was the first time that people actually fought, and it was just, be it was probably because, like I said, it was a crowded Saturday night, and a crowd gathered outside, and the people coming out were, you know, were kind of am were amped up. There was all this energy, and they started fighting back, and that's really when it started. So yeah, no, nope. and the fight continues. All right, uh, rethink reviews by the way on uh, YouTube, Huffington Post, and RethinkReviews.net. Thank you as always, John. Thank you.